What's up guys, Justin here with the TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Scatter tutorial for you. So Scatter, as a lot of you know, is an extension for SketchUp that allows you to randomly place things like vegetation, um, rocks, trees, other things like that inside of your model. So having a randomization extension can be very valuable um, because it's really hard to do all that stuff by hand. So Scatter is a great extension for that, so I thought I'd kind of talk you through how that works how you can use that in order to make your renderings a little bit more realistic. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first things first, I will link to Scatter in the notes down below. So it's currently on sale. Um, you can either get it for 30% off or get it um, with a 50% discount if you buy Scatter and Transmuter together. So Transmuter is an extension for importing different kinds of files into SketchUp. Um, but the cool thing about this extension is it comes with like a content library as well as a lot of control over the scattering process and the ability in a lot of rendering programs to create create a render only type object. So a render only type object means that the geometry is only loaded in in your rendering engine. So there's a number of rendering engines where this works. So some of the big ones are V-Ray, um, Render, Inkscape, um, a lot of others as well, Corona, Octane. So if you have any of those, then you can also bring these in as a render only, which is really gonna help your performance. But let's go ahead and we're gonna use this model that I downloaded from the 3D Warehouse. So model credit, this is the restaurant in the park by Taz 1985 or Taz underscore 1985. So if you wanna download this and follow along, you can do that by downloading this in the 3D Warehouse. So the first thing to remember when you're working with uh, something like Scatter is to remember that you need to optimize as much as possible. Cause usually what you're doing is you're uh, scattering things that are very high polygon, right? So we're gonna try to take steps to be as smart as possible um, for what we're gonna scatter in here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I want to use Enscape's grass function in here. If your rendering program has a grass rendering function, you want to use that because it's probably going to be more optimized than actually spreading grass geometry like this from something like Scatter. If your program doesn't have that, you can definitely scatter that. But for what we're doing right here, I don't necessarily want to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to right click in here and I'm going to explode this. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to figure out what areas actually need objects to be scattered in side of them, right? Because I don't necessarily need to scatter anything in the background over here because that's not going to be a part of my rendering. My rendering is probably going to be from this location right here. So really it's just the stuff that's going to be visible in your scene. That way you can save on uh, geometry and performance. And so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to explode my ground and I'm gonna group the areas that I actually want to scatter things along, right? So really it's gonna be these visible areas right here. It's probably about all I'm gonna to wanna to scatter along, right? You might wanna do something in the background over here with a couple trees, so we might add these as well, but I just wanna group these. And what we're gonna do is we're going to use scatter in order to scatter some trees in here. So if we were to render this in Enscape right now or whatever your rendering program is, it's gonna be pretty boring, right? You're gonna have this house in here or this building in here and everything's just kind of blah. Um, so what we need to do is we need to add some vegetation to make this look like a more developed area. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to use Enscape's grass function in order to create some grass. And all you need to do to do that is just apply a material so we're gonna go into materials, landscaping, fencing, and on these faces, we just wanna apply a grass material. And again, this may vary depending on what your rendering program is. For Enscape, anything with the word grass in it, if you turn grass on, will render grass in that location. And so you can see how if we zoom in, you can see that there's actually grass being rendered in here. And we may go into our Enscape settings and turn that grass height up a little bit. So we'll turn the height up and we'll turn the variation up. But this is gonna be a lot faster for your processor um, using that function. So now we've got some grass in here, but we still need to add some things like trees and other things that'll make this look a little bit more realistic. So we're gonna do that 
using scatter. So the way that we're going to do that with scatter is we're just going to use the scatter library trees. So there's actually trees contained in here that you can use. So I'm going to click on this button right here. You can see how there's trees built in. And so let's scatter some trees along this face. So to do that, you're just going to click on the trees and we want to load these in as proxies. So since I'm using Inkscape or if you use these other objects or these other rendering programs, um, these are going to load these in as proxies inside of SketchUp, but full geometry in your rendering program. So um, if you have one of the other programs, you can do full geometry. Do not uncheck the box for render only because that'll try to generate all of this geometry in here inside of SketchUp and SketchUp will crash. So if you can do the proxies, that's what I would prefer. But then once you bring these in, you need to click on this button right here to pick a grouped surface. And if you remember, we created a group right here that we can use for our scatter location. So if I click in here, you can see how that's bringing trees into my rendering. But there's a few things we need to change. So all of these red boxes right now are indicators of where trees will be. When you click on the button for render in your rendering program, um, if you have one of those four, it's going to load in that full geometry. So if I jump into Inkscape and render this real quick, you're going to see that all those trees are going to get rendered as a part of that rendering. So you can see how I've got a lot of trees in here, right? So the trees are nice, but there's way, way too many of them right now. And they're in places that don't really make sense. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So we're going to close Inkscape. First thing we need to do is we need to add a mask. So notice how right now you've got trees getting placed inside of your building footprint. You don't want this. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to this clipping areas option. And we're going to paint those areas out. So to do that, you can click on add a paint area and click on exclude. And what that's going to do is that's going to let us paint in here to tell Inkscape where not to put things. And I'm going to go ahead and bump my brush radius up to more like 360 instead of 36. But now what I can do is you can see I can just click and drag in here. And this is going to let me paint an area where I want Inkscape to exclude all of my trees. So I'm just going to paint this out real quick. Notice how all of the red objects that were in here went away. So now, instead of having a million trees in here, um, in my building footprint, I've just got the trees over here in this area that's outside of my painted area. And so now, you can see how these tree locations make a lot more sense, but there's still too many of them, right? It kind of makes this look like it's sitting in a forest, which we don't necessarily want. So we're just going to go up and we're just going to adjust this so that there's less trees. So instead of 314, maybe let's bump this up to like 614. So we'll type in 614 right here. We'll do the same thing on the Y. We'll do 614. Well, now, you can see how that reduced the number of trees contained inside of our model. Well, now if I was to go back and rerun this render, it's going to make a lot more sense, right? You're going to have trees on your hill that are just kind of randomly located. And one thing I forgot to do is you want to click on the button for regenerate so that this saves your changes inside of your rendering. And this is the cool thing about a real time rendering engine is notice how fast that changed happened once I click this in here. And so one thing that's still a little bit frustrating or just not very realistic is our grass is very like uninterrupted, right? Like we have the grass in here, but it's very, very kind of uniform and not very interesting looking. So let's go back in and let's scatter some bushes. So to scatter some bushes, we would just click on the button right here to open our scatter library. And we're just going to add bushes zero one. We'll go with proxies. And then we're just going to do the same thing where we just select this group surface. So we're going to click right here, click on our surface. You can see how that brings all of these bushes in. And in this case, we are probably getting a few inside of the building footprints, but generally you're not going to be able to see them. So I'm not super duper worried about it. But if you were worried about it, you would just come in and just paint a new clipping area like this. But now we're just going to click on regenerate. Now, if we look inside of Inkscape, you can see how we've now got bushes on our hill as well. So now we've got trees and bushes inside of our rendering. Well, let's add some rocks. So we're just going to do the same thing. 
click in here add some smooth rocks click on load just add these to this group surface as well so now if I go back to my rendering I've got rocks I've got bushes and I've got trees so one other thing we might want to do is maybe add something to break this grass up even more. So let's go back in and let's add some flowers. So we're going to open up this library and let's add in these daisies right here. So we're going to load these as proxies. We'll place them based on this face. And you can see how these are brought in randomly. So let's bring down our items per unit instead of 0 0.10, maybe 0 0.05. Then we're just gonna click on regenerate. And so you can see how we've got a little bit of a problem, right? And the problem is if we were to zoom in, our grass is taller than our daisies. Well, since our grass is taller than our daisies, we can't actually see them, right? So let's go in and adjust our scaling. So to do that, you can scroll down and there's an option for random scale percentage. And notice how right now, um, this is telling us that the XY or XYZ is locked between 90% and 110%. Well, what I wanna do, and I'm just gonna click on XYZ right here, is I'm gonna set my max to something like 300%. So now this is telling this that this should randomize these either from 90% of the total height all the way up to 300%. So now if I click on regenerate, you can kind of start seeing those, but they're still pretty small. So we could either reduce the size of our grass in Enscape, or we could just play around with that scale modifier a little bit more inside of scatter. So maybe I want these to be between 90 and 300. So what that does is that starts making those a little bit bigger and you can start seeing those inside of your render. And so you can kind of play around with that, but you can see how the power of in or the power of scatter allows you to kind of randomize locations of vegetation so things start looking more realistic inside of your rendering. So that's kind of an overview of how you can add things to your renderings. There's definitely a lot more you could do with this, but I recommend giving it a try and playing around because this is a really powerful scattering extension for SketchUp. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you used Scatter before? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.